I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, motion worksheet one, and uh, we can compare our answers, or you can compare yours to this at least. Um, so, what we got here, consider the position versus time graph for the cyclists A and B. This one's A, starts at the origin and starts at zero and has a slope. I'm just going to go ahead and do this stuff now because I know that when I see one of these position time graphs and I've got a straight line, I know that I've got constant velocity. And I know that the things that I need to, if, just like writing the equation for a line, you need to know point uh, and you need to know slope. And if you know, if that point that you know is the intercept, that's great. And uh, so if I know the starting point and the slope, then that's like all the information that I need. So the slope of this is, let's see, the rise is 80 over 10 run. That's what I'm looking at here, rise over run, 80 over 10. So the slope of this is 8 meters per second. And for cyclist B, uh, the starting point is at 20. And the slope is, this is a rise from here to here. It's a rise of 40 over the same run of 10. So that's a slope of 4 meters per second. OK, so let's see what <clears throat> we got here. Do the cyclists start at the same point? No. How do you know? They have different intercepts. I'm not going to freak out if you say they're different y-intercepts. I'm a little, um, I'm not crazy about that because this is our position axis. Um, but vertical intercept, I guess you could say, just different intercepts. Um, if not, which is ahead? So uh, it looks like cyclist B starts at 20 meters. And A starts at 0 meters. So B is ahead. All right? Um, at time 7, which cyclist is ahead? So let's see, time 7. Looks like A is ahead of B uh, because A has a greater position. Now you could say like that because the graph of A is above the graph of B or something like that. That would work too. I'm just going to say that. Um, which cyclist is traveling faster at time three? Well, they're both moving at constant velocities, so the at time three thing really has nothing to do with it. This one is always going eight, and this one is always going four. So A is always going faster than B. Um, so which one's going faster? A. How do you know? A has a velocity of eight meters per second, and B has a velocity of 4 meters per second. Are their velocities equal at any time? No, because this, they just said what they are, because uh, that one's always 8, that one's always 4. Um, don't do that on a test. I'm just being lazy here because I'm trying to get my homework done. Um, what is happening at the intersection of lines A and B? Well, something, something's the same there when lines intersect. You know, they're at the same point. So what's happening here? Um, they're at the same place at the same time. Same uh, position at time 5. And you could say, if you're trying to actually describe what's happening here, um, you could say A is passing B. All right? How about this?
Ooh. Um, let's do that quick analysis here. I think the A cyclist is the same, right? It starts at zero and has a slope or a velocity of 8 meters per second. Um, and then B starts at 60 and has a slope of negative, or in other words, constant velocity of negative 4. So the rise is 60 to 20. That's negative 40 over 10. All right. Um, how does the motion of cyclist A in this graph compare to the, that of A? Uh, exactly the same. How about B? Well, let's see. What did B look like? B was, so B got like flipped around here. In this one, B started at 20 and went to 60, and now B is starting at 60 and going to 20. So um, I guess you could say uh, something like that, right? Um, in number one, B starts at 20 meters and travels to 60 meters at constant 4 meters per second. And in this one, in number 2, B starts at 60 meters and travels to 20 meters at negative 4 meters per second. This just means in the other direction, in the negative direction. It doesn't mean they're bicycling backwards. It just means they're going the other way. Uh, which cyclist has the greater speed, and how do you know? Um, well, speed is the absolute value of velocity. In other words, your speedometer always tells you the positive version. So um, let's see, what are their speeds? Speed of this one would be 8. Speed of this is 4, because speed can't be negative. So still, A is faster. So A has, like, how do you know? I mean, let's just say what the speeds are, right? A has speed 8 meters per second, and B has speed 4 meters per second. I'm saying 4, not negative 4, because speed doesn't care about the negative sign. Speed is always positive. Uh, describe what's happening at the intersections of A and B. Um, they are passing. In opposite directions. So this one is like, oops, like this. They're passing each other. Um, passing each other opposite direction. And that makes me want to say maybe here what's happening at that intersection. A is passing B uh, in the same direction. A is just passing because A is going faster. Here, they're passing because they're going in opposite directions. doesn't matter if A is faster or not. Um, which cyclist traveled a greater distance during the first five seconds? Well, um, A traveled, just look at the graph, A went from 0 to 40, which makes sense if you're going 8 meters per second and do that for 5 seconds, maybe 40 meters. And B traveled, uh, let's see, B is uh, in the first 5 seconds, B goes uh, 10, no, sorry, 20 meters. And distance is kind of like speed. Distance is always positive. If um, you were to ask me, hey, Mr. McGrath, what's the distance from the school to your house? Let's say it's about 15 miles. And if uh, then you said, oh, but what's the difference from your, what's the distance from your house to the school? I wouldn't say negative 15. I'd still say it's 15 miles. Um, so distance is always positive, like speed. So uh, A. All right, so that's a little intro. Um, worksheet for you. Hope that went okay.